You're now listening to the Wandering Buffalo podcast with your hosts, Andrew Chang and Justin Goddard. Hello and welcome to the Wandering Buffalo podcast, now again a part of the built-in Buffalo family. My name is Andrew Chang and alongside me is my co-host Justin Goddard. Tonight we are going to dissect the Buffalo Bills schedule. We're going to analyze each game, our opinion on if we think it's a W or if it's a loss, (laughs) Uh, our record prediction. Uh, Justin and I are then going to give you our top three easiest winnable games and then our top three most likely loss (laughs) games. As always, you can find us on social media and podcasting platforms and even on YouTube by searching The Wandering Buffalo Buffalo Podcast. You can also find our show as well as um, other amazing shows by looking in the built-in Buffalo Podcasting Network. Justin, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing great, buddy. Thank you. Um, If anybody tuned into last week's episode, um, we did a little trivia game and I was riding high off my W, spoiler Uh, alert, for a little bit. And uh, HQ caught wind of it and uh, sent this puppy over in the mail today. What is that? They heard me talking about the belt. HQ sent down the belt. By HQ, I mean I I ordered this. Are you serious? We got (sighs) Bill's Mafia belt. Wow. So, my friend, this is going to be all of our betting stakes going on from here to the future. <laughs> so this is what's on the line right here. If you're if you're listening to this, Justin has a WWE like championship belt. There's that's just the only way I can describe it with mafia and Bill's color uh, just across it, just it's hanging got, over his shoulder. It's got beer holsters too. Wow, that wow, that's right pretty on the fancy. Side there, not yeah. gonna lie. You know, speaking of this trivia, uh, our most recent episode with trivia, I'm going to go out here and say this. We had someone who said they didn't like it. They said that it was boring and that they they just couldn't stand it. And to that, I'm sorry that you didn't like it. But I am thankful that you let us know. However, if you could let us know what we could do better moving forward, we would appreciate it. Um, But, you know, I'm sorry it's not your cup of tea. We all have we all have uh, other amazing podcasting shows and content on the Belton Buffalo Network. So, if we're not it for you, most likely it's um, the other shows that we have on the network. Justin, you want to touch base on that? No, just kind of same thing you said. Uh, we're always looking for you know constructive criticism. Um, maybe our show's not for everybody, but I had a lot of fun doing last week's episode. And yeah. Look forward to doing more like it with you. Yeah, and if you want to, hey, if you're listening to this podcast right now and you want to challenge Justin for the belt, hit us up. Hit, give us a DM. There's send a us an now. email, and uh, maybe we'll send the belt your way. Who knows? <laughs> Anyways, let's go into some Bills-related news. The Buffalo Bills signed defensive tackle uh, Trayvon Hester. He's a former Raider and Eagle. I see like this is a much needed competition, Justin, for the defensive tackles. Uh, you know, not named at Oliver or Vernon Butler specifically because Vernon Butler took that pay cut and Star Latule. Uh, you know, maybe Hester challenges Justin Zimmer or Harrison Phillips for that for their spot. What do you, What do you think? Yeah, I think this is like. Uh, I think it's exactly that. It's kind of, you know. Bean likes to bring in competition at all levels. It's not just, you know, how can we upgrade a starter? He's always looking at the depth, um, Mm -hmm. everything like that. Um, Justin Zimmer had some flashes last year, so, you know, maybe he comes in and pushes Justin Zimmer to be a little bit better. Um, Harrison Phillips, you know, he looked promising at times. Uh, He had the ACL injury and Mm kind of never looked the same, so, you know, He's gonna his contract's gonna be up soon, so maybe it's a little not it what the future plan is there. Maybe it's kind of being a little fast forwarded. Um, but yeah, I think behind our starters, the defensive tackle is definitely a, a place where we could use some competition. So I like the move. Um, probably a tail end of the depth chart kind of guy, but bring in all the competition you can. Everybody just pushing everybody to get better. 
right? And I'm going to quote Akeem, the co-founder of the Built in Buffalo Network. Pressure makes diamonds. I listened to that one today. I love that one. I, I love like that, that quote. Moving on, Josh Allen had a birthday, and it was on Friday, so the 21st. Uh, we're recording this on the 24th, so it was like three days ago. Um, so he's 25 years old, still on his rookie contract, plays at a high level of football. What more? What more do we want from this man, Justin? And just, just keep it going at the level he is. I mean, yeah. I, I would love to see another step forward, but even if, you know, if last year is any indicator of what we'll get for from Josh Allen for the rest of his career, that I mean, that's a great quarterback. We're talking top five conversation. If I have that for the next ten to fifteen years, I'm, I'm a okay with that. If he wants to get even better, I'll, I'll take that too. Happy birthday, Josh. Happy birthday, Josh. And you know what? Maybe maybe we'll send you that WWE-style belt. He's got to challenge me on trivia first. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, another rookie signed his rookie contract. A little redundant there. So my apologies. So DeMar Ham- Hamlin signed his contract, and it's about time. So that, I think that just leaves Gregory Rousseau and uh, who else? Why I think I... Rousseau's the only one left now. Oh, Spencer Brown. That's it. I don't think he signed yet either. Correct me if I'm wrong, but either way, those two are coming. We just don't know when. Uh, moving on again. This is I like this news that I, I'm about to break, which I'm sure everyone knows about. But the Bills hired two women to full-time staff positions, uh, as well as two women to interns positions. So Sophia Lewin will join the Bills team uh, as an offensive assistant, she has history with the team, right? So she served as a training cap assistant in the past. Uh, she did quality control uh, coach at Princeton and a wide receiver coach in uh, high school out in New Jersey. Andrea Gosper also joins the team as a full-time uh, staff or employee as the player personnel coordinator. So she also has history and rapport with the Bills, and she served as a scouting intern for the team in the past two seasons. Huge. Huge, right, Justin? Mm Mm-hmm. Absolutely, yeah. I I love seeing the Bills kind of being on the forefront of this type of, on Mm -hmm. these type of uh, moves. You know, it's, it's 2021, and all across the league, you know, there's lack of diversity and... You know, that gets focused on in one aspect or another. But, you know, women being part of the game is, you know, we saw the first women official last year, you know, just kind of bringing them more into the fold. It's kind of like, why, why have we had to wait this long? But I, I love seeing it for my team. I, it's just great to see for the sport in general. Right. And then the other two women that got hired for intern positions, uh, Michelle Geeter and Nicole Dunoff scouting intern and operations intern respectively Um, and then we're just gonna move on to the last i guess bills related news here and that's that there's a lot of buzz about julio jones and his potential trade destinations maybe into the 716 justin what are you thinking yeah i everybody i've talked bills with in the last like week or so has been asking me, what about Julio? What about Julio? And I'll start by saying Julio Jones is one of my favorite receivers in the league. Uh, It's just, that's not realistic. If it did happen, I would be flabbergasted. Um, You know, he's a great talent, but when you start lining up, you know, what the contract is, Mm -hmm. you know, we're already right up against the contract, so you're going to have to talk. We're shedding players now, and that's, before you even get into the logistics of, you know, you have different personalities in the locker room. You got Stefan Diggs coming off a career year, and now you're going to talk about adding another, you know, legitimate number one receiver. You know, it, it's one of those moves to me that looks great on paper, but is kind of really carefully, has to be really carefully executed to play mm-hmm. out well. Um, I, th- I think it's a pipe dream regardless, mm-hmm. um, but that's... That's something that I, that's something I do sitting down playing Madden. You know, I want to go win a Super Bowl this year, and it's like, who's on the free agent wire? Who can I trade for? And, you know, 
you shut all your offensive line depth because you have the injuries turned off and you just got studs at every position. It's just it's it's not something I see translating. Yeah. And it's not something I see happening, but I, who I knows? agree. I agree. I don't I don't really see this as something that's feasible nor do I think the Bills should do something like that. We're going to like come on. Like we're we're going to acquire Julio Jones for what? We the Bills have arguably the best wide receiver room in the NFL and we're going to make it even more crowded. Like, right. And then to your point, we're going to absorb that contract and therefore we're going to have to part away with some valuable valuable contracts, right? For one player like I I don't know. I I just or, don't see like it's happening. Or you're or you're talking something about, you know, like sending Gabe Davis back in a trade, which, you know, yeah, no. Maybe no, we see you. a step forward from Gabe Davis, maybe we don't, but um I'm more interested in, to see what kind of career Gabe Davis has versus, you know, Julio Jones is still playing at a very high level, but you're still talking, you know, an aging receiver versus, you know, a guy on year two that, you know, the the world is his oyster right now. You know, he could go wherever. Right. All right. Well, let's uh, go into the meat and potatoes of tonight's episode. We're going to break down the schedule. So we're going to start with preseason. Not going to touch on this for too long just because it's the preseason. Uh, I, plus the addition of that 17th game makes preseason even more, like even less valuable. Sorry. I do like preseason because the tickets are cheap. And, uh, you know, when that happens, it's like you're one step closer to the regular season. And you also get to see the rookies for the first time. Uh, we play the Lions away. Bears away. Side note, Mitchell Trubisky facing Re- his old team again. Revenge game. Revenge. Revenge. <laughs> and, of course, uh, number three, we have the Packers coming to uh, Highmark Stadium. Anything you want to talk about? With these? Yeah, I mean, so for me, the preseason's kind of, you know, how passionate I am about the draft. I think it's kind of born of just years of having the bad teams and just being so excited to get the first look at these players. Mm-hmm. Um, so I still personally love the preseason. Uh, I think there's still a place for it in football. And f- for me, for me with a team like we have, you know, a couple warm-up reps for, like, the number ones, but a team like this where you, you know what you're bringing back and all that, it's just kind of like a tune-up game. Yeah. But what I'm really interested to see, you know, no, already knowing what we do about the starters, getting some extended looks at a lot of these younger guys mm-hmm. that you're probably not really going to see this year barring, you know, injuries. And it's just interesting to me to see, you know, the the game speed – um, results of some of these guys that we're not really going to have other opportunities to see. Um, so obviously I don't like the preseason for the the fact that, you know, one of my star players can go down on a, a weird freak injury. Um, I, I hate that part of the preseason, but I do always love getting a look at these players. I don't really care who we play, what the results of the game is, but, you All know, right. I, I want to see – you know, Rashad Wild Goose locked up against a receiver and see how he looks in coverage. So, yeah, still interesting to me. Yeah, it's definitely a good sneak peek. Uh, just the injury concerns are a little uh, tricky. It's a lot scarier when you have a team that you know is kind of poised up to be making some sort of noise. Right. Anyways, let's transition to uh, week one. So week one, we play the Pittsburgh Steelers. And that is on September 12th at 1 p.m. It's a home game, and I love how we've gotten the best of the Steelers recently. Most of it's been on prime time too, Justin. Uh, you know, Big Ben doesn't really scare me, but that defense is legit. So, at the end of the day, I'm going to predict a, a Bills win. What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, so I think this is one where... Uh, it's kind of beneficial for us that we're going to be playing um, last year's division winners. Um, uh, you're looking at, would you rather play Pittsburgh week one or Cleveland? You know, and I think, I think Cleveland is on that upward trajectory, and we have the Steelers instead because they, they were the one seed last year. 
Um, Big Ben is not the quarterback he used to be. Maybe with an off season of rest, he he looks a little bit like himself again. But I I think this is I think what we saw last year is pretty much what Ben is at this point. And probably a, a future Hall of Famer, but at this point in his career, he he's just not he's not the offensive weapon that he used to be. Um, mm-hmm. They also have Swiss cheese for an offensive line. They didn't really do much to sure that up they they drafted a running back in the first round you know i thought they were primed to go offensive line in the first round Mm -hmm. so i i got this one uh i got this one as a scrappy battle because it it, pittsburgh's a similar team to buffalo they're always you know a gritty out but i got this one as a week one w for sure week two september 19th at 1 p.m we're going. We're going down to uh, Miami to play the Dolphins, and those early games in Miami, man, they're hot. They're real hot. And do you remember last year when there was like a lightning storm and coverage went out, and we couldn't even see Stephon Diggs' first touchdown as a Bill. Hopefully that doesn't happen this time around. Um, and you know the Dolphins got more weapons they definitely got better this offseason so that's something to consider so they like for example waddle fuller it kind of makes me nervous they have legitimate wide receivers now outside Devonte parker and people like to hate on tua but i think this game is going to be a close one just like the last time we went down to miami and what week two or week one i I can't remember but i think it's going to be close i'm i'm still predicting a bill's win though come on i know i kind of led you down the road where you're like "Eh, is he gonna say a lot no i i think the bills can pull it out i think josh he's the dolphin slayer he can do it and i believe in him so i i'll start with i agree with you uh it's a win but i will say I don't think that the Bills sweep the division again this year. Um, oh, so, spoiler alert. Spoiler. But where will it come? This is only the first one. Um, so, yeah, that if I was a fan of the Miami Dolphins right now, I love the way they're putting their team together. I mm-hmm. like Brian Flores as a head coach. I think they're really improving and on the right track. Um, I just don't think by week two – they're going to have all their ducks in a row with, you know, all the changes they've made. They're definitely improving their team. Um, But I think Tua still needs some time to develop into who he's going to be as a quarterback, um, if he is going to continue improving. And then also I feel like, you know, bringing in some weapons around him. He hasn't played with Will Fuller. He hasn't played with Jalen Waddle. You know, those guys are legit NFL weapons. They're legit NFL receivers. Um, But, you still got to kind of work out all the kinks of how it's going to play out. Um, playing a team in Buffalo that was right on the cusp of a Super Bowl last year, I don't, I don't think that by week two they're ready to, they're ready to take us down yet. Yeah, yeah, and then you you make a good point. If if I'm playing the Dolphins, I I understand the heat aspect of it, but I'd rather play them earlier so they they have a little. You know, they don't have enough time on task, and they don't have that chemistry figured out completely with, like, Fuller and Waddle and their other offensive uh, weapons coming back together. So that's a good point, and I think we can we, – we, we definitely could take advantage of that. And so, I will say one more thing on Miami, too. Um, there's a lot of situations where – Tua was playing, you know, not great, but he was managing the game and had the team in some sort of position to win the game. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they were doing the move where they'd pull him out and let Fitzpatrick, you know, finish out the game. So for me, I always thought that that was an interesting strategy because now you're in year two of Tua and you don't really know, you know, it's the ifs and maybes there, like, Mm-hmm. Would he have been able to back against the wall pull out wins that Fitzpatrick played, or Fitzpatrick pulled out? We don't know. So right. you know, seeing him, there's no safety net there now. It's just it's Tua. So right, I think it'll be interesting to see what he is this year. Yeah, moving on to week three, 
uh, September 26, 1 p.m., the Washington football team. Comes, Speaking of Ryan Fitzpatrick. Right, he comes on home to Highmark Stadium, and this game is interesting. That D-line is pretty stacked, and you saw how close they were uh, into almost beating the Tampa Bay Bucks in that wild card game. Fitzpatrick, as you mentioned, is in, so you're not sure what's really going to happen, and he tends to impress earlier in the season, and I really like what Ron Rivera is doing over there. Terry McLaurin's the truth. I, I have this as a loss, Justin. So this game is I, it's pretty early in the schedule. I think this is our first real challenge, uh, and I think this is going to kind of come down to Fitzpatrick. Um, their their defense is scary. I I want no part of seeing Chase Young. I want him to stay as far away from Josh Allen as possible. Um, I'm just hoping we get a little bit of the the Fitzpatrick we had in years in Buffalo. Or, you know, game on the line. He he's got him in a spot to win. He throws you know one of his one of his gunslinger interceptions. I think it might come down to a situation like that. Um, I think this is a game where we're going to need to win the turnover battle, and we'll probably need one late to seal up the game. Mm -hmm. uh, but I have us doing just that. I, I see this one ending with uh, some sort of, you know, two minutes left in the fourth quarter. Poyer Hawks went out of the air, slides to the ground, and we, we coast out with a victory. We're 3-0 and right now. Right, right. Well, it looks like we have our first uh, disagreement, but I hope I, I you're right. See this, I could see <laughs> this one going either way, so I'm, I'm not going to yeah. be mad at you for that one. Well, uh Shoot, let let's put the belt on for it. No, I'm just kidding. No, no, I'm just, I, I I don't want to bet. I don't want the. I don't, I'm not going to bet for a Bills loss. <laughs> All right, let's move on to Week Four, October third, one p.m. The Bills stay put at home because the Houston Texans are coming back, but we don't know who's going to play QB because of that whole situation that's still kind of up in the air down there. Is it going to be Deshaun Watson, Tyrod Taylor? I mean, this team's in shambles right now. And it's an example of what can happen if you have a general manager that pretty much just mortgages the team's future draft capital, hands out bad contracts just to try to win right now. And you see Brandon Bean doesn't do that. And I'm appreciative of it. Regardless of who the quarterback is, Justin, this team is not a competitor. I would even argue that they're probably going to pick in the top 10. Like, probably top 5, realistically, in my opinion. So, I'm going to predict a Bills win. Yeah, that for me, this game, it's it, you can have Deshaun Watson if, if he's there, whatever. The I don't like anything that this team has done in the offseason. You know, there's a chance that their starting quarterback is Tyrod Taylor. I have a lot of respect for Tyrod Taylor, but he's not putting much fear into me. Um, and honestly, neither is Deshaun Watson with the team that's around him. I don't like their decisions at, at their coaching changes that they made. I, I just don't like anything going on in Houston. And mm -hmm. I, I think this team has the possibility of having a winless season. Um, so I, I have the Bills as as a W here. Um, with the caveat of, I realized this this far into the exercise when I was doing my picks, that I don't like the 17 game schedule for the the fact that I I always used to break it down into the quarters, and you know mm -hmm. how many now wins and even. losses do we need <laughs> per four to get to like a 10 win season, you know? So you have a rough stretch, and you're like, eh, I could see us going one and three there, but you know, whatever. It doesn't break down evenly into fours anymore, and I don't like the 17 games for that. <laughs> That's your only uh, gripe with it, huh? That's the only gripe. Yeah. All right. And I, I do want to say Deshaun Watson as a player is phenomenal, so I'm not going to write that team off completely, but I am confident that we could probably beat them. Uh, moving on to Week 5, Sunday Night Football, October 10th, 8.20 p.m., the Bills Tra travel to Kansas City, Missouri to play the Chiefs. Sunday Night Football, the first primetime game, and it's the AFC Championship rematch. This game is huge, Justin. There's no other way to 
like go around it. And if you're if you're not a fan of the Bills, you know this game's huge because you're like, oh wow, it's the AFC Championship rematch game. For us as Bills fans, this game's even bigger just because it's like, okay, did we catch up to the Chiefs? I feel like this whole off season, this whole draft process, it's us. It's been how have the Bills caught up to the Chiefs? Have they done it? Have we gotten better? What are we going to learn from the first two games that we played in last season, and how will it play a factor this time around? Well, I mean, we got younger and cheaper at defensive end, right? So that makes a difference. But is Pash Rush going to get there in time before their playmakers get open? I don't know. And you got to worry about all the Chiefs' weapons, too. And Patrick Mahomes, he's he's the next factor on his own. So I, I'm reluctant to say this, but until I see it happen, I'm going to predict a Bills loss. So I'm not I'm not too far off on a lot of what you just said there. Um, for for me, the Chiefs are, you know, the the class of the AFC right now, um, and it's it's kind of like you know always when the Patriots were Big Brother just giving us noogies all those years. You know, whenever they look down, you know, it's hard to really be predicting wins until you've kind of seen seen it hang seen them hang in there a little bit better. Um, I do think this is the first game that we see um, McDermott and Frazier kind of get crafty with the with the new defensive ends and throw some exotic looks in there. Mm-hmm. And I, I think we see our first, you know, significant playing time from Boogie Basham and Rousseau. Mm-hmm. And I think they throw the kitchen cabinet at them, but until, until we get over this mountain, I, I have this one as a loss right now. Yeah, good point uh, marking or pointing out the defensive ends because they are trying to do that compression style. Keep them in there as long as possible. See, we'll, we'll, we'll cook them. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. Anyways, then we're going to transition after that Kansas City Sunday Night Football game to Monday Night Football at 8-15, October 18th. And this time the Bills are traveling to Tennessee to face the Titans, our second primetime game. And this is the Tuesday night football rematch. Mm, Tuesday <laughs> uh, at 5. Yeah, Tuesday mm-hmm. at 5, but now it's just going to be Monday at 8. I feel like in recent memory, the Titans and the Bills have gotten this rivalry that's been developed. And maybe it's just because we always see them because they're pretty much on the same trajectory as the Bills in terms of their progression on the in their division. So I just think that they're a formidable opponent i i want revenge on that tuesday night game where they played the victim everyone's like oh my god the tennessee titans they were able to overcome all these covid things like no bro no that's not what happened what happened here is y'all broke a bunch of rules and now you're going like oh we we were able to overcome this like no you broke the rules and now you're playing the victim no no i'm not buying that (laughs) i'm not one bit I don't I don't think this team is as good as they were in the past two seasons. Tannehill doesn't really scare me, but he does surprise me from time to time. You know, regardless, I still predict a Bills W. Yeah, I, th- I think Tannehill's, uh, I think he's a better quarterback than he's given credit for, but he also doesn't really strike fear into me. Um, what I don't like with this matchup is their, the strength of their team is the play action and and the running game with Derrick Henry. Um, obviously, they've they've lost Corey Davis. They lost uh, Jonu Smith. Um, I think you're going to get a heavy dose of Derrick Henry, and I think this game, more than any, is really going to fall on Josh Allen. Uh, I think the Titans are going to do a lot of ball control and try to run through Derrick Henry and control the clock. Um, so I think every possession we have, we're going to have to make the most of it. Mm-hmm. Um, all that being said, I I think the Titans kind of like got to this peak where they were about to go over the hump and kind of just started rolling backwards. Uh, they have lost some key pieces. I'm not really scared of their secondary. Going into the bye week, five and one, baby. Yeah, yeah. Moving on, bye week. We all take L's here, so we got to watch those uh, 
other division games and hope for the best. <laughs> I, I will say I love the timing of the bye week here that regardless of the outcomes of the previous two games, those are going to be two two games back-to-back that they're putting everything on the line for. Like They know what those games mean. Yeah. So I think this is a good little reprieve to you know recover from those games get a week off come back fresh right right anyways after the bye week halloween the halloween game Ooh. in buffalo the miami dolphins make their way up here and it kind of feels weird that we're going to be done with the dolphins this early you know i just feel like in the past couple of seasons we always see them like week two or week three and then we see them week 17 but now we're going to see him week eight. <laughs> so, whatever. Uh, I think we can squeak. I think if we can squeak out a win in week two, then we can definitely get one at home. Fingers crossed. And we saw what happened when we first played the Dolphins, right? They kind of kept it close. And that second time we played them, our second stringers blew the lid off of them. So, I'm going to predict a Bills W. All right. So, so on this one. I'm kind of ignoring the fact that it's a Halloween game and how ruckus that crowd is going to be. Um, so division rivalry games are always really tough. And like I said before, I, I really like the trajectory Miami was on if I was a Miami fan. I don't like it as a Bills fan. Mm-hmm. Um, so this one is, is largely uh, me putting some faith in Tua taking a couple steps. Um, but I I see this one as a loss. Um I'm kind of kind of bucking the trend of how good McDermott is um, off of off of bye weeks. Uh, I, I think he's undefeated coming out of the bye in Buffalo. Um, I could easily see this being a win, um, but like I said, this one was more kind of me thinking that we're not going to sweep the division again and trying to pick where a loss or two might come in. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm kind of giving Miami respect that I feel like they're due. I don't right. want to be overlooking them. So I could easily see this being a win, especially coming out of the bye week. Um, but I think if we're going to drop a game to a division rival, it, it's going to be Miami. So either this one or the first one, but I got one of the two. But we're still sitting at 5-2, and two, so we'll, let's move on to next week. All right, Justin, you kind of shook me here. I, yeah, you I weren't expecting that one. I thought you were going to say a different rival game, but uh, or division rival, but we'll we'll get to that. We'll get to that. I have I have I have thoughts. Anyways, uh, since we're talking about Miami, let's move a couple hours north in fl- the state of Florida to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Sunday, uh, November seventh at one p.m., the Bills will go to Jacksonville. It's a way game. Urban Meyer was a great college coach, Justin, but this is the NFL. Right, it. I think it's, I, I think it's gonna be a little different from him. I wish we were playing him earlier in the season so we could be the ones to give him kind of like that wake up call. Like, oh wow, this is probably a little harder than I was anticipating. Not saying like Urban Meyer can't do it. I just don't really know what that transition is gonna be like for him, especially since he took some time off to like be a broadcast host, right? So he hasn't coached in a little bit. Uh, Trevor, Trevor Lawrence is amazing, though. He's, like, mad good. But this team is also mad sus. Plus, you don't get the number one pick for no reason, right? So I don't think what they did in this offseason is going to be enough for them to catch up to the Bills. They got a ways to go, and unfortunately for the Jags, it doesn't get easier with the Bills. I'm predicting a W. And so... I've seen I've seen better college coaches come to the NFL, and I'm I'm talking Nick Saban specifically here. Uh, I I actually really like the way uh, Jacksonville's building their roster. I just kind of prefer a more seasoned, steady hand in the NFL to be the head coach running the show. I mean, for what it's worth, for me the news breaking that Tim Tebow was signing to the roster, you know, whether he makes the team or not, all that kind of just the fact that that news is out there. The guy hasn't even played a snap in the league in six years. He's 33. I I think he's 33. No disrespect to Tim Tebow, but the fact that, 
you know, my ESPN tickers telling me that Tim Tebow is back in the league and going to the Jaguars is just kind of to me like, okay, so I still don't know what they're doing running this organization. All right. It's kind of been their story for years. They they have all these high first round draft picks and they ha- they're accumulating all this talent and they just don't have a leader that puts it together. I don't see Urban Meyer being that leader, that culture cultivator that makes it all come together. I don't see it. Bills go six and two. You know what this hire reminds me of? Who's the that? The John Gruden hire in Las Vegas. It's like, bro, let's let's get that big name. Have I shown you is the uh, the is Gruden gone yet ticker? No, but we'll, you'll you're gonna have to show me after. I'll show you after. I I yeah. showed Jake, but. Is but Gruden gone yet? Doesn't com. that Check give you that? Isn't that give you the same kind of vibes though? Yeah, yeah. Anyways. But on the op- opposite spectrums, you know. Right, right. Anyways, week ten after we play uh, Jacksonville, we are going to travel up to New Jersey to face the Jets. Uh, November fourteenth. It's a one p.m. game. I love the one p.m.s. This game. This team got a lot better too. In the offseason. I love what Joe Douglas is doing. And I got to put respect on his name. The Bills' strengths are in the passing game. And unfortunately for the Jets, their weakness is cornerback. They have nobody out there playing cornerback. Like, quite literally, like, uh, roster fringe players, really. Similar to the Jaguars' reasons, I wish we could... Get the Jets earlier in the season, so I could re- so you know the Bills defense could break in Zach Wilson, you know, show him like, hey, welcome to the NFL, Trey White pick, Trey White pick, still could happen, but you know, uh, regardless, I predict the Bills win. Yeah, I, I agree with you here on Joe Douglas. Actually, scares me a little bit because I yeah. haven't seen competent management in in the Jets organization in so long. Um. Quinn Williams looks like he's going to be an absolute stud. He's you know, a boss. Again, I, I feel like they're building their roster the right way. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say any any game in the NFL is an easy win, um, but that the team that they trotted out last year was barely NFL level, and it, I don't see them turning around quick enough to be taking us down anytime next year, so... Get our seventh win of the season. They All will right. scare me in the future, though. If Zach Wilson is the quarterback they think he is, they're building something there. Right, right. I I agree. Yeah, Joe Douglas definitely does scare me because it makes sense what he's doing, and I don't like that. Stop right. making sense, dude. Yeah. Jets, this is out of your realm. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to take a quick bye week a.k.a. our break, and we'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. We're going to wrap up our schedule breakdown episode by picking up at week 11, Sunday, November 21st at 1 p.m. Again, I can't get over how many 1 p.m. games we have. I love it. Love it. The Colts. The Colts are coming back to uh, Orchard Park, Highmark Stadium, and it's the wild card rematch game. This is a tough one in my eyes, Justin. Carson Wentz is much better than Phil Rivers, in my opinion, and he also has significantly less children than Phil Rivers does. So that's something you got to keep in mind. Yeah, most this team, do. yeah, <laughs> this team was in the playoffs, you know, and they were there for a reason. They were pretty good. They have a bright future, a lot of cap, a lot of talent on that team. Frank Reich is a great coach. And I'm going to let you do your, you know, your analysis of this game, but I'll lead it off with this and see how it takes you. But I'm going to predict a Bills loss. All right. So so I'm, I'm looking at this from the lens of having played them in the playoffs last year. Um, as you and Jake both know, I'm, I'm not a Carson Wentz fan. I don't think he's a great quarterback. But I think it's easy to see him as an upgrade to Phillip Rivers. Um, at the point Philip Rivers' career that he was at, um, so so for me, if I just do a one for one swap on Rivers and Wentz in that game last year, 
I don't think we make it out of that playoff game if Wentz is the quarterback. Uh, I think I think the Colts are a very dangerous team. Uh, mm-hmm. I think their defense is lights out, stout defense. Mm-hmm. They have a great run game, which maybe we show a step forward in defending that, but that's kind of been our Achilles heel. Um, I think all around, you know, like I said, I'm not the biggest Carson Wentz fan, but, you know, he had good rapport with Reich in Philly, and I, I think this becomes one of the teams to beat in the AFC. Uh, I think this is an old-school slugfest. I have us coming up just short on this game, so I, I agree with you there. We have our first agreeance in terms of a loss. Well, hopefully we're both wrong and, you know, just like this crazy snowstorm comes in and, you know, maybe we'll maybe – we have a little recap of that Winter Wonderland game where McCoy broke off for that uh, wow. 20 or 30 yard touchdown. What a great game that was, Joe. Webb you were there, weren't you? I was. Oof, that was that was a cold one, Justin. <laughs> I think I wore Chuck Taylors to that game too. Huge mistake, and you know Jake was there too, and he wore slip-on Vans. Apparently, yikes! We're oh my same, God! Same wavelength. How, you, how are you guys literally walking? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't get it. That game was a blast, though. Right. Let's move on to week 12, November 25th, 8.20 p.m., the New Orleans Saints. We are going to visit them for Thanksgiving night football. Prime time game number three. But who the hell is going to lead this team, Justin? Jameis Winston, or the tight end, running back, quarterback, Taysom Hill. You know, know. the positionless player, the, you know, the person who can do do everything but master of none. Or the new eye-corrected lenses, (laughs) Jameis Winston. It's got the LASIK. Yeah, you know, I mean, I I just don't really, I, I don't know who they're trotting out there, and at this time of the season, I think we'll have a good idea of who the Saints are going to be. But Sean Payton is proven that he's good. He's kind of a, he's scum, but he's good, you know. And that's my own personal opinion. Opinion. If you disagree with me, you can come at me. I'm fine with that. But the Saints always seem to lose steam towards the end of the season, specifically in the playoffs. Not to you know get a little dig at them. Uh, plus, this team had had some key departures in the off season. All that to say, I feel nervous about this game for whatever reason, Justin. And I'm going to predict a loss. So I agree with your nerves on this game. I, there's something about the Saints that you know Breeze retired, and uh, you know you should be looking at the Saints like, well, they're not going to do much without Breeze. But then you look at the past two seasons, you know, he's missed time, and I think they won five straight with Teddy Bridgewater out. Mm -hmm. You know, they stayed afloat last year with a combination of Taysom Hill and and Jameis Winston. This this team, despite not being, you know, this world-beater team, they they find ways to win, and... It's very interesting because if you if you show me the roster and Taysom Hill at quarterback, I'm giving you a loss every time Taysom Hill is at quarterback, but they find ways to win. Um, mm-hmm. I kind of look at this game as, you know, being that, that Thanksgiving primetime shootout game, and I, I don't trust Hill, Winston, I don't trust either of them to outduel Josh Allen on Thanksgiving. Josh Allen gets, gets to eat another turkey leg on Thanksgiving. I got that as a W myself. Well, I hope you're right. I and hope so, you can, too. You know, help me put my uneasy nerves to rest. I know for <laughs> damn sure I'm going to need about three naps before we get to that nighttime game on Thanksgiving. Yeah, that turkey's going to oh, put yeah. me down. And then the turkey again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyways, after that, the Bills go into Monday Night Football again. But this time we play the Patriots at home. So Monday Night Football in the 716 
It's the Bills' fourth primetime game. And again, at this point of the season, we don't really know who the quarterback is going to be, right? Cam Newton could be there if the wheels haven't fallen off of him at this point. Or Mac Jones, you know, or Jared Stidham, I guess, if he even makes the team. I don't really care who plays quarterback at that point. Um, They're going to roll out that tight end system, the 21 personnel, two tight end system. And it is a little intimidating just because of the uh, success they've had back in the day. And I think we can, I think that kind of scheme can draw up a lot of problems for the Bills team, especially if we have to play man, which we traditionally don't do. But still, I'm going to predict a Bills win. So I have, I have the Patriots this year basically riding with Cam Newton until until their playoff hopes are squashed. Um, I do think they're going to be a better team than last year. Um, but I think by this point in the season, either we see Cam Newton, who doesn't scare me at all at this point in his career. Mm-hmm. Uh, what I think is actually going to happen is I, I think this Monday night game could be the first time we see Mac Jones start a game. I think there might be a couple games before that where – you know, the game's a little bit out of hand, and they, they bring in Mac Jones to see what he's got. But I'm predicting Week 13 as Mac Jones' first start, and I'm just ready for the bright lights being on him. McDermott, Frazier defense dialed up, the bright lights just... I'm not predicting this one to be a win. I'm I'm predicting this one to be a smackdown. Oh. I think we make Mac Jones look silly. <laughs> I'm talking, like, three interceptions... Uh, strip sack like s- something crazy like that mm-hmm. and like we convert on all the turnovers and all of a sudden you got like a 35 to 6 ball game I think this one's going to be a beat down wow you definitely you got me I was like oh so we're going to lose this game you thought I was going to say a loss you were building it up for a win and then you were like it's not going to be a win the old bait and switch it's going to be a bloodbath <laughs> yeah I, I think I think this is going to be, I think this should be our biggest beat down of the season. Hey, I would love that. But let's transition to week 14. Our, I think our, it's our only 4.30 Eastern time game. And December 12th, we are going to go to Tampa Bay and face our good old buddy Tom Brady, the bane of our existence as Bills fans. They're still super good. That team is still pretty much intact, and we saw what they did to Kansas City in the Super Bowl. That's probably going to be too much for us, in my opinion, so I'm going to predict a Bills loss. Um, So this one to me is is similar to the respect I have on the Chiefs right now. Um, I think I even prefaced it with, you know, New England was always our our big brother giving us the noogies. Mm -hmm. Uh I'm not betting against Tom Brady in any game, let, ag- let alone against the Bills. That I would love to, to see a W here. Um, I think this is a possible Super Bowl preview game. Um, but and, until I see the Bills beat Tom Brady a few more times, I'm not betting against him. So we're dropping uh, what our, our fourth loss of the season on this one. You're dropping your fourth loss. I'm dropping my fourth. <laughs> right, right. I don't know where you're at. Oh, well... We'll find out soon. Yeah. Anyways, week 15. We don't know when that's going to happen, but we do know it's going to be a home game and the Carolina Panthers are coming into town. It's up in the air if that's going to be a Saturday or Sunday game or what time it's going to be, but it has the potential to be the fifth primetime game for the Bills. And I like what Carolina is doing too, honestly. Sam Darnold got a fresh start there. And Carolina, which I think he really needs. And I don't know what it is, but this game makes me nervous too. And I have it as a loss. So I'm going to disagree with you. I agree yeah. that I like the team that Carolina's building. I like I like kind of the grit they have that when they look like they're down and out, they, they, they keep fighting. Um, for me, what does it with this game is kind of just the exact opposite of you. 
I I don't see Sam Darnold turning around his career. I was never a fan of Sam Darnold, and I they were right there to they they could have gone after Justin Fields. They went after Sam Darnold instead. I think this was a good time to hit the reset button on the quarterback position for them, and I I think that's going to be like a three to five year mistake that they didn't pull the trigger on drafting a quarterback there when they find out Sam Darnold was never going to be that guy. This one's a W. Right. Well, you know, I do like Sam Darnold, and I just don't think the Jets helped him at all. Imagine. Agree. Like, if if you swapped Sam Darnold and Josh Allen in terms of where they got drafted, where do you think Josh Allen is right now? He's not where he is with the Bills right now. Exactly. Uh, I, That's what I'm I saying. I guarantee that. Um, <laughs> I think it's it's a little apples to oranges to me, but I get what you're saying. Um, I just, when we were talking about Sam Darnold. Josh Allen's out of the league. I'm saying that. Yeah. It, if we're talking about, you know, when Sam Darnold was Maybe getting not. the first overall pick hype and all that, I just, I never really saw it in this game. We mm-hmm. also know that in that draft, my quarterback was Josh Rosen. So, Ignore everything I say on the quarterback scouting front, but uh, I don't think Sam Darnold's that guy. That's right. all. All right. Well, we'll agree to disagree. I don't think he's the guy either, but I, I think he's not the worst. <laughs> yeah, he can be serviceable, but you had you had a chance to draft a franchise-altering quarterback, and you went with another stopgap instead. Yeah. Anyways, week 16, uh, December 26th. We are going to New England to play the Patriots again. And I'm a firm believer that in when you face your division opponent the second time around, you learn about you learn a lot about that franchise in terms of like who they are as a team. You learn about a lot about yourself and that's because you have more time to evaluate that that team. It's your second go at them. You have more tape. And last year when we had that opportunity and played the Patriots on Monday Night Football, we destroyed them. It wasn't like that first game we played with Cam Newton where Justin Zimmer knocked that football out of Cam Newton and it was a nail-biter, right? Uh, The second time we played them was an absolute massacre. And it's so much that, you know, Belichick's tossing phones left and right. And I loved it. That's what I was doing there. I saw that, and I hope it happens again. I hope he tosses two phones. Shout out Kevin Gates. I predict a Bills one. So for me for this game, if we don't see Mac Jones as I predicted as the starter, was it week 13? Uh, I think we're definitely seeing Mac Jones as the starter by now. Um, and Mac Jones doesn't really intrigue me as a quarterback. I, I feel like they kind of drafted him to be, you know, in that Tom Brady mold. And, like, Mm. the whole NFL is shifting away from that mold for a reason. And the Patriots are like, we can do it again. And this is, you know, no slander against Mac Jones or anything, but I feel like they're trying to just find that next Tom Brady. And Tom Brady is a a a once-in-a-lifetime quarterback. I hate giving the man respect, but he deserves every ounce of the respect I have for him. If you're going out out trying to find the next Tom Brady – Good luck, and I think that's what they're trying to do here. Yeah. I think we're going to see more Mac Jones growing pains. I, I think this one's a W. Yeah, I think Mac Jones is going to just be more of a man game manager, yeah, in which, my opinion. Which is fine, but you're not taking down the, the class of the AFC with, with that mentality. Yeah. Anyways, let's move on to Week 17, which normally would be the last game of the season, but it isn't. The Atlanta Falcons are coming home to Highmark Stadium January 2nd at 1 p.m. Uh, I don't know if Julio is going to be there. I'm just, you know, predicting he's gone at this point. He's going to be there on the Bills. Oh, yeah, yeah, because we can do that. (laughs) Uh, I I don't know if he's going to be on the team, though. And if he is, I'm not really concerned. This team had a top 10 pick for a reason. Matt Ryan is on the decline, so all that to say, it's a Bills dub. 
Yeah, I'm going to agree with you on a W here. I think I think chances are Julio gets moved. Um, it seems like he doesn't really want to be there anymore. He's got a huge cap figure for maybe not really wanting to be there anymore. Um, I think this is a game where Kyle Pitts just thrashes the Bills. Like, we can't do anything to stop Kyle Pitts. Mm -hmm. um, but one guy is not enough to, to beat the Bills. Um, Atlanta's had all kinds of talent. You're talking, you know, Calvin Ridley, Julio Jones on the same field. Matt Ryan's a pretty good quarterback. But they haven't really been able to put it all together. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you're losing a key piece like Julio, if he's gone, either way, I don't I don't really see him putting it together. I'm going to take this as a W, but just with some scars from Kyle Pitts. Right. And then we'll transition to Week 18, the last game of the season, January 9th, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. The Jets are coming to Buffalo, New York. I'm sorry, Orchard Park, New York. And it's a home game, as I just mentioned. It's a Bills W. I'm not going to say anything more about this. So uh, I will say something more about it. Uh, I have a caveat here that this all depends on what we're playing for. Mm -hmm. If we have a one seed or a two seed wrapped up, the 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 standings can't change. I think the game outcome could be a little bit different. But mm -hmm. where I landed on this one is, you know, unless something crazy happens, I feel like this Jets team is like I like I said before, they're they're on the right trajectory. But I, I feel like this is a game that even if we play our backups, we might come out with a win. If we're playing a Jets team that doesn't really have, you know, they're already ready to start booking their vacations and we're looking at the playoffs. And, you know, if, if you're talking about resting our starters, you still have Mitchell Trubisky coming in, mm -hmm. you know, a quarterback. And I don't think he's a great quarterback in the league by any stretch of it, but... He's in the top five of backup quarterbacks in the league. So I think even if we have a situation where we play a lot of our backups, I think we still come out of this with a win. So, Yeah. And one, one last thing I'm going to toss in there. Last week the Bills had their position locked up, I'm pretty sure. I mean, they tossed in Matt Barkley fairly early, and the Dolphins had everything to play for. And we still thrash the Dolphins. Beat down. And I think the Dolphins are a way better team than the Jets. So that's why I picked a Bills W. Regardless if we sat like our starters and we threw in Trubisky, I, I just don't see I just don't see how it it could be anything else. I agree with you. Yeah. Anyways, let's transition to uh kind of a recap of our schedule. So Justin, I'm gonna give you my top three most likely wins real quick, and then you can give me yours and we can just talk about it. I think the three easiest wins are the Falcons, the Texans, and the Jags. What are yours? Okay, so I'm not too far off, and I will say we categorize this as the easiest wins. Uh, I won't say – I'm never ready to say any win in the NFL is easy. Most I certainly mean, not. The Jets were – absolute train wreck last year they still managed to pull out two wins um mm -hmm. so that being said um i'm not too far off for you but i i kind of cheated and i put the jets twice <laughs> okay uh if we were only doing you know one team or the other i probably would have had um houston in there but i also have jacksonville i just right. i think jacksonville is on the right track if they mm -hmm. put everything together but not in year one. Not not with everything they have going on in year one. Right, um, right. Houston's I guess a dumpster fire. Yeah, yeah. I guess I was trying to think outside of the division with these ones. But, yeah, no, you're definitely right. The, the Jets game should be, I mean, again. If they had the anybody in the secondary, I would I would feel a different way. But Yeah, they don't, though. So the strength who, of our gonna, team is yeah. passing. I, I don't know who's supposed to be responsible for – Diggs. Stefan Diggs, let alone the fucking Beasley. eight receivers we have behind him. <laughs> yeah, it's just not going to happen. Sanders, Davis, Davis, Davis Hodgins, Stevenson, if he makes Stevenson. the team. Like, 
Kenzie, whoever you want to throw at him, like, yeah. I just don't see it. Yeah. Anyways, now you give me your three most likely, I, well, I guess maybe not most likely, but your predicted losses that you think are actually going to happen. Um, so the one the one loss I had in there was to Miami. Um, like I said before, I, I easily see that one as a win, but I didn't. I didn't want to predict us winning or sweeping the division again. I think that's so rare in the NFL. I didn't want to predict that. So I had to pick a loss in the division somewhere, and that's the one that made the most sense to me. Um, I'd say the three most challenging opponents on our schedule I'm putting at Kansas City. Um, I got here. I don't know if I did a typo, but I put Tampa Bay. I don't know if I did that on purpose or not, but I hate myself. And then I got uh, Tennessee, and you know, I, again, I think Tennessee's a, I think Tennessee's a very winnable game. There's, there's not anybody you can put against us in the league that I don't think we can beat on a given week. Um, Tennessee's just kind of the matchup against them with Derrick Henry is just a bad matchup for us. So I think that's going to be a really tough game in that regard. Um, I think that. I think it ends up being a win, but I have him as one of our most difficult opponents this year, a.k.a. Right. most reasonable loss. Okay. My top three teams that I think are probably losses, and I'm going to pick a, something outside of Kansas City. So I think Washington football team, that pass rush, again, scares me. They have so many first-round picks invested in there, and they're good. Ryan Fitzpatrick, early in the season, can catch fire. Terry McLaurin, again, Ron Rivera, very Antonio good coach. Antonio Yeah, it's – I mean, you don't think much about the Washington football team outside of, like, you know, that name scandal and Dwayne Haskins, but they have been low-key pretty good. Like, you know, I mean, they went to the playoffs and – I don't know. I, I guess I a team like that I feel like gets overlooked, and I'm just I, I'm just a worry worrisome person when it comes to that. Uh, the Tampa Bay Bucks and <laughs> Buccaneers for Tom Brady. I just until it happens, right? Right. Until it happens. Didn't he get Tampa Bay trademarked? I don't know, but if he did, that just makes me hate him a little more. <laughs> I think um, he did. And then. Lastly, if I'm not going to pick Kansas City, I'm going to say the Colts. I just, I think that team's tough. That team's tough, right? And it's it's just going to be a dogfight, and I hope I'm wrong, but I could be right, you know, and I don't want to be right. I, Anyways, I'll definitely say the, the Colts were an honorable mention on mine. For sure. I, I didn't want to leave Kansas City off the list because, you know, AFC Championship mm -hmm. game last year. But I see where you're coming from. Yeah. So I am – my schedule prediction is that I'm predicting 11-6. and six. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I like to err on the side of caution. So I used to I'm, – I'm looking at the bill schedule kind of similar to how I looked at my tests – after I left a college, like, you know, college exams. So I would look at a, at each question, let's say there were 20 of them, and I would just go like, all right, I, I know I got these right. These ones I'm not so sure about, and these ones I'm pretty sure I got wrong. So Worst I, case scenario. My, yeah, worst case scenario, I got a four, I mean, I, I tell myself this as I leave. I'm like, all right, guy, and people go like, all right, what do you think? I was like, best case scenario. I got a 36, and I'll just, like, walk out, and I'll just, like, you know, bite my nails all, all day long until, like, two weeks later until I get the test, and they're like, oh, I got, like, a 92. I'm like, all right, cool. Cool. I, I'm cool with that. <laughs> um, anyways, I think the Bills can sweep the division. Playoffs are definitely in the future if that can happen. But regardless, if we don't sweep the division, playoffs, definitely in the future. I, I I was listening to your speech. Uh, did I miss your final number? Eleven and six. Eleven and six. Okay, so I got us thirteen and four. Okay. And I uh, I tend to be uh, the opposite of you, where I'm a little bit more on the optimistic side, 
and I feel like I had to roll, reel myself in a little bit for this exercise, I could easily see this being, you know, 15 and 2. I could see it going as far as what 12 and 12 and 5. Um, but I think we're I think we're definitely in that in that range. Right, right. But I got it at 13 and 4 right now. All right. Well, I think that's going to wrap it up for this week's episode. Next week, we're going to talk about injuries and how they could derail the Bills like most impactful season this season coming up right there's so much riding on this upcoming season and we're just going to talk about what could basically health wise destroy it and i guess that's not a fun conversation to talk about but it's it's something that could happen and we need to discuss it go ahead and like comment subscribe and review our podcast as well as other amazing shows that you can find on the built in buffalo network We're always looking for guests on the show, so reach out to our social media platforms if you're interested by searching The Wandering Buffalo Podcast. Justin, where can the people find you? On my free time, you can find me on the uh, top ropes of the wrestling ring. Jesus. Uh, Anything podcast-related, football-related, you want to talk about the Bills, you can find me on social media at jgods22. Uh, You can message me at uh, at The Wandering Buffalo Podcast. Hit us up. Uh, We're looking for guests on the show if you want to come join us and talk about the Bills. As always, uh, one day I'm going to steal that belt from you. Uh, It's glorious. I can't uh, wait till it's on your shoulder. Right. Anyway, yeah, you're going to see it right next to the flu flakes behind me. But you can find me on social media platforms by searching 2 Jangs. That's going to wrap it up for tonight's episode. And as always, go Bills. Go Bills. Go Bills.